Hi guys, that's the very first transmission in this channel, there is a big pleasure to have you here, welcome to my channel, flight simulation channel, so this is a pre-inauguration transmission, so tomorrow we are going to do our very first official flight. Yeah, Chicago here to New York airport, but today let's follow and be with me in the cabin to this flight from Fort Lauderdale to Atlanta International Airport. Welcome, welcome on board. First thing to do is to download the charts for Fort Lauderdale and also Atlanta. I'm not sure if I have Atlanta. Yeah, I have it. Right, I'm using the Navigraph chart desktop to download this the charts. And uh, let me decrease a little bit the sound here. Yeah, a little bit more. Maybe using the mix sound. Yeah, let's put in the middle here. That is it. So I invite your guys to, if you are going to, if you are watching this video online or offline, just invite your friends, share this content, put in your virtual lines, in your social networks, and for every thousand videos that we can you know reach in this channel i'm going to produce a brand new course okay so let's start with the full flights videos and the idea is to cover all the flight procedures the pre-flight checks flight planning process and everything uh, from the real pilots and real procedures yeah so as we know we have a hurricane in the US is reaching Mexico right now is the British Patricia hurricane let's, let's take a look in the aviation weather website so in the aviation weather is a website that is live for more than 15 17 years if i'm not wrong they are providing live uh, weather information to the north american mainly, mainly the u.s so what you can see here so what you see here in the aviation weather website is some um, um, red squares or close to that that is related to some significant weathers so as you can see here we have some significant weathers um, over Mexico that is related with the um, hurricane so if I if I want I can turn on the set image so I can see the hurricane is just over here over Mexico is decreasing the intensity right now and we can see um, a long way you know through the middle in the US you know from Mexico taxi Texas and also you know the um, all the central area until the Great Lakes, Great Lakes in the north of the U.S. And uh, wow, well, but the the goal here we are going to fly from from Fort Lauderdale to Atlanta, Georgia International Airport. And uh, what we want to see is to take a look in the radar. That is most important than the satellite image. As you can see here is the hurricane is over here and also a lot of significant weather in the central in the central north Texas, 
taxes and you know Dallas is very peri is very complicated right now but for this flight we're going to fly from Fort Lauderdale to Atlanta International Airport that's our flight for today and I know there is no significant weather from this route let's take a look in more details let's zoom out a little bit and to take a big picture and also let's put the matter not a radar let's keep the radar matter we can also do a more dedicated a more detailed uh, weather briefing if you want just going to the observation we can take a look at a more specific area we can also open the Java tool to take a look at the details weather but <coughs> at the end we don't have a very significant weather between Fort Lauderdale and Atlanta International Airport so let's go ahead and uh, let's go ahead and, and do the flight planning right so I have to do the flight planning I'm going to use the PFPX software and um, PFPX is uh, direct connected with Active Sky for the weather. So let's take a look here. Okay, before to go to the PFPX, let's take a look in the real flights. Let's go to the flight aware and put the origin and destination report in these fields here. So Kilo Fox Rock Lima Lima for for other there, and Kilo Alpha Tango Lima for Atlanta International Airport. And so let's type on search. As you are flying the 737-800, let's get the first flight that is using this aircraft. No yet, no yet, no yet, no yet. As we don't have a 737-800, let's take a look here. Yeah, we can get the 737-700. And the first one is the Southwest flight. Is the Southwest 3310 from Fort Lauderdale to Atlanta International Airport. We also have some weather advisors in this map and there is not significant weather between Fort Lauderdale and, and, and Atlanta Airport. What I have to do is let's let's take a look in the flight here. So mainly the duration of this flight is one hour 37 minutes. This is a real flight um, that normally departure from every Saturday, and they're you know departure from eight six forty Eastern time, and arrive at Atlanta at uh, eight seventeen, and then we can get this. We can use this route if you want. The PFPX route software they can plan our flight or flight. And they can also get the, the route calculation if you want. Sometimes I use the PFPX to do my route calculation. And sometimes I just uh, copy and paste this route to my PFPX. And then my PFPX can handle this route if I want. But let's try first, uh, let's try the PFPX first. So let's just memorize this flight number, Southwest 3310, and put here, add flight. And the Southwest code is S, Whiskey, Alpha. And the flight number is 3310. Let's put here 3310, and from, from Kilo Foxtrot Lima Lima 4 for Lauderdale and Kilo Alpha Tango Lima for Atlanta Georgia International Airport. Commercial flight number is Sierra Whiskey Alpha 3310 and departure time, time will be uh, 30 minutes from now from the time I'm preparing this flight plan. Let's choose the aircraft. It's a Boeing 737-800 with winglets. Maximum passenger is 174. That is the one that I created previously in my PFPX database. Once I add this, the flight, I, I, I have to do the flight plan. Let's click, click in the flight plan and put the destination airport, the alternate destination airport. I have to choose at least one. Um, I like to, if you can, you can start from the beginning of the flight planning. There is pretty much what we already 
did in the beginning of this flight planning. So uh, let's. I I like to go from the bottom to the top and choose the destination now uh, alternate airport, and we have a lot of options here. So the first closest option is the Kilo Foxtrot Tango Yankee Airport. That is just about uh, less than 10 miles from the Atlanta airport. And what we know is the recommended uh, distance from the the destination airport for the alternate is minimum 60 miles but this depends pretty much of the um, the offer of those of the sweet bowls airports in the area and also you know weather condition the general weather condition in this region is uh, very good very fine I, but I also like to use as a personal rule to not get an airport closest to 60 miles. So for this flight, I'm going to use the. Um, we can use. Okay, we have to also take a look if this airport is a regional airport that if this re airport can can afford or can support an aircraft like this one, the 737. That is not the case for this one. Green CO Regional Airport, um, but I'm pretty sure you know that is the size of the biggest runway is in this column. You know, we can also order by the size of the runway. For example, we have this uh, Huntsville International Airport. There is a runway with almost four kilometers, but it's um, about of 130 miles of distance and then we can elect this runway or we can get another one. For example, for this flight, we can get the Lovell Airport, you know, that is in the southwest, southeast. It's Kilo Charlie Hotel Alpha. We can get this one. Let's take a look if I have the chart for this airport, for this airport, Kilo Charlie Hotel Alpha. Kilo Charlie Hotel Alpha, I don't have it. Maybe I have to choose the biggest airport. Maybe this Tallahassee International, Kilo Tango Lima Hotel. Kilo Tango Lima Hotel. Yeah, we have this one. Let's choose this as an alternate airport. Kilo Tango Lima Hotel. Okay, double click. And then we have the alternate airport that is in the south, you know, is in the Florida South. And the advantage to get a long distance and alternate airport is because, you know, if I am planning to go to this airport and if I have to alternate to this airport, I am not. Ma it's not mandatory to take this airport, but instead, we can get any airport that is in this area over here with the same distance. So as you can see, we have a lot of affordable airports. So we can use even one, we can use every airport like this one, every airport there is in the, this big circle as an alternate airport, you know. That's, uh, we have to keep in mind when we choose an alternate airport and then I choose this one. I can also use every airport there is in the same distance radio, you know. So let's go ahead and let's uh, ask for the PFBX to choose the flight plan. That, that's okay. They choose a normally and departure procedure, the waypoint and the airway. So now times to you know, choose the route between Fort Lauderdale and Atlanta, Georgia International Airport. I'm going to put find and the PFBX will find a, a best route for this flight. If you want, we can go back to the website here, copy and paste this route, like um, Ctrl C, Ctrl V, you know, copy and paste. And we can put here in this field and the PFPX will calculate the real flight plan if you want. So let's let's get this an ex as an example. 
Um, I don't like to copy and paste every single flight from the flight aware because some st sometimes the flight aware plan is not um, uh, really updated with the current uh, winds. So maybe we have to not consider this real flight plans and we can get a different one like this one um, suggested by the PFPX because the PFPX they always get the weather information from the active sky and then we can um, they can calculate the, the best uh, departure procedure and the best arrival procedure next step is to get the fuel so they will calculate the correct field for this flight including the alternate airport and also the 30 minutes of uh, military um, backup uh, fuel and also the 5% of the total flight but I also like to add uh, extra fuel for taxi you know um, I know there is not uh, needed uh, more than 250 kilos of fuel between Fort Lauderdale and Atlanta but I'm going to add a little bit more fuel I use uh, kilos instead uh, pounds because I I live in South America I live in Brazil so I'm use it to to do my flight planning calculate calculation using kilos instead pounds or I use metrics so as uh, in Europe for example okay but you can convert for pounds if you want okay payloads I don't like to, to put um, a fixed uh, value for the payload the passenger quantity and also the, the payload instead of that I use the random payload button right here so let's take a look and then and, and click in random payload and the PFPX will choose some payload for us and for this flight they choose a 180 118 out adults for children and two infants and also some cargo and this will bring us the total of weight uh, that will be about um, for zero fuel weight will be 30, 53.5 tons that's the most important value that we have to take notes so that is very important to do simulation also to take notes and mainly for the weight and balance the passengers and some uh, takeoff speeds for example so let's you know I do recommend you always to keep you know close to you in your simulation desk uh, paper and, and pen so you can take notes of key um, information like the zero fuel weights and maximum fuel weights and so on okay so I know that the cruise and the coast index for Southwest is 100 you know America Airlines they use as a coast index 45 what is coast index the coast index is the value that is that is used by the airlines to calculate the trust that will be applied for this flight and you know as uh, higher will be the coast index much fuel we are going to use for the flight and if you use a low coast index we are using less fuel but we are going to expend more time in the flight time in the total flight time so the air companies they normally they calculate the best balance between flight time and the fuel consumption to have a economic you know flights in the balance of you know flight timing and so on so for Southwest they normally use a hundred for America lines they normally use a 45 for some companies as in South in Brazil in South America specifically they use 45 as a cost index for go there is the major airlines that's you know flight uh, Boeing 737 in South America oh next step is um, okay I'm not going to take off in the exact time we are planning to because I'm doing a lot of explanation 
that I normally don't do in the normal flight, but you know, I hope you can enjoy this extra information to help you to increase your simulation um, reality rate. So let's go to and do the compute flight. If you have an integration between PFBX and the TopCat software that is made by the same company, you can do the performance calculation. And the performance calculation is something related to the takeoff speeds and weights and also for the landing. So let's click on the takeoff. They elect uh, the, the runway, so we are going to take off from the runway 10 right. That is also, you know, a good idea. Okay, 10 left. Let's get the 10 left. Yeah, what I, I was planning to say is that is also a good idea to do a double check about the runways. You know, sometimes the PFPX, they choose the wrong runway in, in terms of runway length. You know, they get uh, shortest runway sometimes, so by, you know, always try to get the longest runway instead of the shortest one. I'm going to take off from the runway 10 left instead 10 right because it's the biggest one. And in fact, if I could remember, looks like that the runway 10 right is closed. It closed in Fort Lauderdale, so let's get the 10 left, okay? If I type and uh, calculate the PFBX and, and, and the TopCat software, we get uh, the best option to do the takeoff. And then they will recommend the flaps configuration for this flight, as in this first field. They will also uh, recommend the thrust uh, reduction and assume a temperature that we are going to explain you know every field on this flight plan in the future flights if you follow this channel if you subscribe if you share we we are going to discuss every single aspects of the flight planning and what is um, thrust reduction what is uh, assume a temperature you know in every single field in this flight plan but by now Let's choose a flaps configuration for the takeoff for flaps 5 and ask for the software to do the calculation and let's just apply this to, to my flight plan. And let's do the same for the landing. Runway will be runway 10. Um, it's not the longest runway in the Atlantic International Airport and if you are in doubt mainly for the biggest airport like Atlanta Airport they have a, a runway that is mostly mostly dedicated for military military um, operations and then in that case you can just open your short software let me create the route let me create a brand new route departing from Fort Lauderdale with the destination of Atlanta Airport and the alternate, um, pff, get. let me get the alternate airport, will be uh, not here. Okay, it's a Kilo Tango Lima Hotel. Kilo Tango Lima Hotel. Kilo Tango Lima Hotel, right, and save in the US route, and that's it. Okay, now let's take a look in the Atlanta airport. I'm going to see the uh, runways. Uh, for example, this runway is mostly dedicated to military operations and cargo, uh, military mainly. This one is mainly operated by cargo, you know. So let's take a look if the recommended runway is uh, current with uh, commercial flights, okay. That is mainly the tax, the runways, um, you know, related to or closest to the terminals, you know, terminals is this yellow circle, you know, and then the the runways that I'm circling, that is normally used by um, commercial aircraft. So you can use a nine left. 9 right in the same case, so you have some common runways that can be used by commercial or military. You can use 9 ones or 8 ones. 
so let's take a look here maybe let's going to use a nine right that will be nine right okay night right is this common one maybe you can use um, nine left yeah instead okay but before to choose this nine left let's take a look if you have in atlanta airport a nine left uh, runway if you have uh, ILS procedures and then we have it we have the ILS cat one for this one yeah so nine right is just ILS cat one let's get the most uh, precise runway man maybe we can choose a different one because we can choose the most precise uh, procedure and let's take a look at the eight right maybe okay let's choose to eight right and we also have to take a look at the eight right uh, runway this is because I don't I don't know very well the the Atlanta airport okay eight right uh, for this one is also cat one cat one um, okay eight right is also category one of the ILS I know the the weather is very good I know I know that but let's take a look and let's see again and and choose a preferable runway to the most precise you know and safe um, landing procedure and maybe we can choose uh, nine left no nine right yeah let's take a look at nine right go back to the charts nine right um, cat three yeah that's it baby so the runway nine right is the most precise procedure for landing in adversar weather conditions nine right because we have uh, ILS we can use ILS um, we can use ILS cat 1 cat 2 or cat 3 right so the runway for the landing preferable we can change in the in the approach procedure if the ATC um, you know ask us to do that but let's choose 9 right for the, the landing 9 right and also you have to take a clear mind even you know mainly in the airport there is a lot of runways you know in this case in Atlanta we have uh, one two three four five five parallel runways we have to have a big awareness about which runway we're going to land in, you know during the approach that is very very important even to do the um, you know instruments approach because sometimes we can we can change for visual and you know we can confuse uh, central runways with like nine right with the runway 10 and nine left and so on so that is very important in this case in, in some in some cases we can use we can even use a visual approach because it's a very confused there is a lot of parallel runways and instead to use a visual approach even in the visual conditions we they the ATC just provide or us or just ask us to do a visual or instruments approach just to avoid confusion about the runway to to land and take off you know mainly for the airport that sometimes is authorized to do parallel procedures parallel approaches parallel landings and parallel takeoffs okay so runway is nine right yes that's calculate I'm not going to use flaps 30 you know this runway is more than two kilometers 2.7 kilometers you know 10,000 feet uh, let's use flaps 30 calculate and apply now we can release the flight export the flight plan for my FMC in the future on this channel I'm going to teach how to plan a flight how to manually add the flight plan to the FMC and so on but for now let's do more automated procedures and I'm going to you know 
and generate my PDF with all the data that I, I need is departures kilo for sort lima lima to kilo alpha tango lima from today 24 10 2015 all right all right back to the, my PDF so that is all the information that I need for this flight my flight plan all the information about field checks and so on every single information that I, I need that is very close to the real flights operation is in this PDF BIOS okay that is my flight plan all the performance data all the data for the landing for takeoff everything I, I need for this flight is on this spreadsheet in this PDF file so with this paper now we can do a brief you know, short brief. So this is the Southwest Flight 3310 from Fort Lauderdale to Atlanta International Airport from 24 October 24th, 2015. Um, the elevation field of the landing is about a thousand feet and 26, and the cruise level is 400 the main formation and coast index is 100. The zero fuel weight, zero fuel weight is 53.5 tons. That's the data about my takeoff data. The runway is dry. Altimeter will be 1017 but has to be adjusted in other measure. But uh, main formation here is flaps 5, takeoff uh, reduction for TO2. That means we are going to reduce the thrust for the takeoff from 26k pounds of thrust to 22k pounds of thrust. And also we assume a temperature of 46 degrees. If you don't know what is the reduce the thrust for the takeoff and assume a temperature, just subscribe this channel and keep following the videos and I'm going to explain you what is the this kind of variations for the takeoffs okay so takeoff speeds is uh, 134 for the V1 135 for VR and 139 for V2 you know I will also explain by in details in the future videos that is my landing data card. I'm planning to do the landing using flaps 30 and the view ref will be 138. The fuel is for the trip, um, you know, 6 tons, 669 kilos. That will be enough for 2 hours and 50 minutes. And this will cover my, f my trip fuel of 1 hour 25 minutes plus 30 minutes of mandatory and 35 minutes for the alter the alternate airport and also 5% of the mandatory extra fuel of course the takeoff uh, estimated time will be not be valid because I'm doing too much explanation but we have here the data about the flight planning for the flight planning, we're going to use the ARC, ARCS for departure procedure. So you have to take a look in the departure chart with ARCS um, intersections. And then we're going to get the, the airways called J115, then Charlie Romeo Golf, and then the arrival procedure call it Sinca 6 Sierra India November Charlie Alpha 6 okay that's our route you know we can locate this route uh, in the PFPX but we brief this route normally this route is deliverable is deliverable delivered by the of department from their company so the pilots receive this uh, pre-calculated from the you know 
uh, special department that will calculate the weathers, you know, winds conditions through the routes and so on. And below in my flight plans I have uh, every waypoints, you know, waypoint by waypoint in the PFBX in this column, so waypoint names in all this column. And also you have some very nice data like uh, fuel consumptions, timing of flight and so on. You can use every everything we want on this uh, spreadsheet to do some checks in the flights. But the most important information maybe is the top of climb information when we can get the reference winds, you know, that is uh, 30, 43 with 49 knots, knots, the cruise level and the temperature. This is maybe the most important uh, information in the waypoint by waypoint spreadsheet, mainly because we have to do this to do some calculation and also to decide if you are going to use uh, ice um, anti-ice systems or not and, and the winds will be used for fuel um, calculations and so on okay I hope you are following the, the explanation so next one go back to the flight plan I think we are ready so let's go to the airplane go to the airplane let, let's choose the southwest livery I'm going to use the 737 PMDG 800 for this flight southwest so we have two one yeah that's it it's the southwest use it the other one was South African it's not southwest and then let's choose the four Lauderdale airport as a departure airport Kilo, Foxtrot, Lima, Lima, and we have to choose the um, gate. Let's get a C1 and open my flight simulation. You can use uh, FSX, you can use explain, you can use prepare. Um, there is the most important in that case is the aircraft that can fully simulate the real aircraft systems. And in this case, um, the only aircraft that can simulate close to 100% of the real aircraft systems is the PMDG 737 NGX. So, and they have a comp compatible um, versions for FSX and Prepare. Okay, here we are. Oh, something is strange with my center. Oh, fixed fixed okay we have uh, not dead aircraft let me synchronize the the timing I have a uh, FS real-time add-on they are they works with the prepare and also FSX they actually normally well what they do is they synchronize the location timing in your flight simulation software with the real time in the location that you are connected so what I'm going to find here is the real time in Fort Lauderdale as I'm connected right now okay and that's why they reload the sand ray because some sometimes they change the, the timing and the weather you know and the textures has to be changed to the new location and let's make sure everything is synchronized and now time to go to my cabin and welcome to the flight deck you know we got uh, a not a cold and dark cabin this is how the majority of the pilots get the cabin when they are you know receiving from the other crews crew and now let's go to you know make sure we have the batteries let's see here batteries is on standby power is on position lights it's on logo lights for night flights is on 
and we keep we can turn on the wing lights as well for external ins inspections okay now it's time we we are running on the apu as you can see here apu is running apu bleeds is already running so we have air conditioning through the packs using the apu right here you know if you are not uh, familiar with those systems I am planning to also do some special workshops to explain how the bleed air system works, how the electrical system works and so on. So subscribe this channel and then in the future we have access for all systems explanations workshops. Okay, time to go to weight and balance. Let's go to menu, FS sections and the fuel. Go back to my flight plan, and for this flight we have uh, we need to use uh, 6,669 kilos. Back to the aircraft, 6669. That's it. Double check, 6669. 6669. That's it. And now the payload that will be. 53.7 of zero fuel weight. 53.7. Now ground connection. Let's. Uh, oh, we are using already the GPU. Okay, not GPU. We are using the APU, and with the APU we already have the ground power. Not ground power. We already have the AC power. We have the bleed air from the APU to feed the air conditioner through the packs. So we don't need the uh, ground power, we don't need air conditioning. Okay? Back and doors for you know service luggage. Okay, was open. Let let me keep this open for now. And that's it. Okay? Everything is done here. I have to go to IDENT page to make sure I have the current um, NAV data and also I have to take a look at the engine rate and if I'm the right um, aircraft so 737-800 with winglets and that's it. I don't have to do my CDU pre-flight right now before that let's um, adjust some lights in the overhead panel dome lights is on and let me do the inertial system alignment left and right we have to put this in the nav position of course there is some we can put in a line first and then when aligned we can put in, in nav position but normally you can use a direct to nav you know as I told you guys, I can explain this in uh, deep with deep details in the future. Just subscribe this this channel, you know, and then I can provide a full workshop videos. Okay, okay. Uh, some backlight nights, back uh, light adjustments. Now I have to test my annunciator flights, anu annunciator lights, you know. This test is used to make sure all the emergence lights is uh, working well. For example, if the light is not working to annunciate the uh, landing gear problem, you know, this can be a big problem. So at this time we put in the test uh, position and we test uh, not only the main panel here, but also we, we have to test, we have to test using the water flow, water fall. Um, I mean, that means starting from the left bottom to the top to the bottom, you know, column by column until we reach the last one and we do the full inspections of the lights the same here for the pedestal panel once done with the test we can turn off the test lights and just the standby instruments just to make sure the horizon is aligned and we can if you want we can let me turn off the master caution we can turn on the auto brakes for the takeoff posi position that is RTO 
RTO means reject the takeoff. And of course, we can cover uh, the reject takeoff procedures in future uh, flights if you help us to get a thousand subscribers in this channel. Okay, the idea is to create uh, two or three uh, videos with full procedures just to open this channel and once we have enough subscribers we can start to do a full systems workshop like also covering some emergence procedures like reject the takeoff single engine takeoffs and go around procedures and so on okay next one let's text to the flight the far detection and overheat detection I can also cover the fire detection systems in in a full workshop dedicated for this proposal but to be able to cover the systems one by one you have to help me and get a thousand subscribers for this channel okay I hope you can help me and understand me take a look at the oxygen pressure and flow that's normal let's get to the radio let's uh, do this flight online connected to the VATSIM let's connect to VATSIM and we'll be southwest 3305 let me double check that uh, 3310 is a Boeing 737-800 and um, we have to put the flight plan here for Lauderdale to Atlanta alternating alternating Kilo, Tango, Lima, Hotel Departure chart time will be 5 a.m. And route time is uh, 1.30, I guess, uh, 1.45. And the fuel available is three hours of fuel. Cruise will be 40,000 feet. This is the route. I can copy and paste from here. Okay. I can use this yellow and paste. File save is optional. Okay, everything is fine. Back to the my aircraft. Let's take a look if you have a ATC online now. ATC is offline and let's go ahead and get the 80s you know the standard 80s frequency when you are, you are using Active Sky next next is 122.0 and let's open the ATC Kilo the Lima Lima airport information Lima zero two five three Zulu weather wind zero six seven at one one gusting to one niner visibility one zero sky condition few clouds at three thousand temperature two six two point two one altimeter three zero zero four advise on initial contact you have information Lima Kilo Foxtrot Lima Lima airport information Lima zero two five three Zulu Okay, we got the information Lima and we also update the altimeter for 3004. Standby is 3004. Here is 3004. And time to do the CDU pre flight. So the pose in it is um, departure airport, Kilo Fox Road, Lima Lima. It's for Lauderdale. And uh, inertial position, we got the GPS and we include here and go to route. Kilo Fox Rot Lima Lima from Kilo Alpha Tango Lima Airport. The runway for the departure will be runway 10 left. The flight is southwest 
3310 I can save this as well and the departure procedure be Arc Arcus 4 I can go here departure arrival departure and then Oscar 4 and the arrival is the same departure arrival arrival procedure I am going to plan to do a full FMC course you know describing in details every single aspects of FMC MCDU programming okay Cinca 6 is the procedure that's it transition is Charlie Romeo Golf and the runway is 9 right forecast at least and the transition for the runway I can keep this in blank and go route activate execute and I'll perform initiation 0 fuel weight the reserve for this fleet is um, 1.5, 1 1.9 will be more or less uh, 1, 2, 2.6 more or less, you know you don't have to be precise, it's just an alert threshold coast index is 100 and the cruise level is 400 flight level, that means 40,000 feet and I have to get this the winds 343 three with 49 343 three with 49 temperature is minus 45 minus 55 I mean the transition altitude in US is 18,000 execute and your limit will be the, the rate for the takeoff will be uh, TO2, so 22 TO2 46 of assumed temperature and takeoff is using flaps 5 double click in CG and V1, VR and V2 will be 134, 135, 139 134 135 and 139 that's it CDU pre-flight is completed let's put the trim for the takeoff is 5.2 that's right and the V2 for the takeoff is 139 so let's turn on the flight director on the left flight director on the right um, 139 for the takeoff the runway heading is 10, 100 more or less. Altitude normally is restricted for 10,000 feet in the US, for 5,000, I mean. But we can double check with the, you know, departing chart. We can, that is a good time to do the briefing for the departure. Arcs 4. Then we get the charts for Lauderdale, arcs 4. And then we have to check to check if you have some altitude restriction and we don't have it, you know, you just have a direction f to do the takeoff. And there is a reference VOR will be for Lauderdale VOR, 114.4. And we have to put this VOR here, 114. 114.4. Departure bit through the runway 10 will be the radio 096 over here and then you have to put here and the MCP course 0 9 as in the is in the chart 096 here and here 
So let's put here 096. And the same for the right course. Next step is to turn on if you decide to use a VNAV and LNAV as a departure navigation procedure. That means a RNAV procedure. This is RNAV. If you're going to use RNAV, that means we have to turn on the VNAV and LNAV for the takeoff. Okay, instead of that, we cannot reach the required performance for for the procedure. Okay, um, scan flow, LEDs, slats and flaps, LEDs checked, PSU lights extinguished, CEF interphone off, engine reverse lights extinguished, EC on and guard, flight recorder checked and guard. Mac airspeed warning test number one, number two test, and stall warning test number one and number two. Overhead detection, overhead and flight controls, alternate flaps, spoiler switches in guard position, your damper on, navigation switches all normal, display switches normal and auto, cross feed valve test on, checked, and closed. Fuel pumps checked. Electric panel checked. Standard power. That's it. Standby power switch guard. Uh, disconnect switch. Drive switch. Power uh, guard. Position. Generator switch guard. And checked. I mean off. Checked. Wiper is off. APU is running. Equipment cooling normal, emergence exit lights guard, passenger signs on, window heat on, probe heat off, engine anti ice and wing anti ice off, hydraulic panel checked. You have to turn on the hydraulics. Hydraulic panel checked. Pressure normal. Doors closed. Cockpit voice recorder switch test and erase. Pressurization gauge gauge test. Trim air on. Recyclation fan auto. Overheat detection test checked. Pax auto, isolation valve open and APU bleeds on. Precision land um, cruise altitude is 40,000 feet. Landing altitude checked for the shards will be a thousand feet. Wing lights off. Lights checked. Ignition to the right position. Main panel checked. Master caution checks. FEs from the left checked. MCP check. Auto throttle on. This is optional. You can turn on just in the holding point of the runway if you want. Right FEs checked. DU normal checked. Auto pilot, auto throttle, FMC lights checked, standby instruments checked, fuel flow reset valve on, auto brakes RTO lights checked, brakes pressure normal here, noise well. Steering switch to guard position. DUs checked, normal. Lower DU to engines. Parking brake is set. And uh, APU is started and online.
time to do the pre-flight check. Pre-flight checklist. Pre-flight check. Oxygen test at 100%. Navigation transfer and display switch is normal auto. Window heat on. Pressurization mode selector. Auto. Flight instruments. Heading. 277. Checked. 277. Altimeter. 3004. Parking brake set. Engine start levels cut off. Pre-flight checklist complete. Let's disconnect the aircraft from the ground. We have the parking brake set. That's it. GPWS test on this side. Press and hold. And TKS test. Wide slope. ATC transponder B2000 because we don't have Wind ATC shear. right now. Yeah. In terrain. Pull up. Almost Pass. ready for, almost ready for, you know, push back and engine start. We are very delayed in our flight. We were planning to do the takeoff at um, 355 and we are already 402. So we are seven minutes or more. At least we'll be at least uh, 50 minutes delayed because I'm doing uh, extra explanations in the cabin flow and pre-flight preparation. And that's normal the delay, okay? Okay, the weather radar is on. It's not supposed to be. Okay. Ready for the departure. Let's turn on the fuel pumps. Hydraulic, hydraulic pumps. Pax is going to off for the engine start. And anti-collision lights on. Door is all closed and uh, before start checklist before start checklist fuel 6.6 .6 tons pumps on passenger signs on windows windows locked MCP V2139 heading 100 f altitude 5000 feet CDU pre-flight completed, rudder and aileron trim. Okay, MCP, back to MCP, V2139, heading 100, altitude 5000 feet. Takeoff speeds, V1, 134, VR135, V2139. CDU pre-flight completed, rudder and aileron trim frame zero, tax and takeoff briefing completed, and collision lights on before start checklist complete. Open the chronometer, the counter, and let's do the pushback. Parking brake list, shift to P, and starting engine number two. We have 25% of N2, open gas for engine number 2, and following the EGT, we have a fuel flow. The oil pressure is increasing, and also the oil temperature. EGT is normal, we have a good start on the engine number 2. Let's take a look here, continue with the pushback. Maybe we are ready to stop and parking brake is set. It started cut out and it's starting engine number one. Twenty two. 23, 24, 25, gas, and monitoring engine start number one. We have a uh, fuel flow, EGT is normal, oil pressure and temperature is increasing.
vibration it's okay we have a good engine start so 49 50 percent of n2 and going he started cut out generator is on probe heat Vex auto isolation valve auto apu bleeds off Engine start switch is continuous, APU off, taxi lights on, and flaps 5. Flight controls checked, left, neutral, right, neutral, up, neutral, down, neutral, rudder, left, and right. Flight controls checked. Clear on the left. Clear on the right. Before taxi check. Before taxi checklist, uh, generator is on, probe heat on anti ICU off, isolation valve auto, recall check, auto brake RTO, engine start levels idle, details, flight controls checked, ground equipment clear before taxi check complete, going to the taxi. We finally are going to take off, taxi and take off. That is four louder day. Oh, that's an aircraft in the ground. Um, we technically has to coordinate because we are we are using the VATC network. So we have to go here, open the V pilot, and do some kind of text coordination like uh, traffic four louder day. Taxi runway ten left via and if you can be a specific you can you open the airport chart like this and via Bravo Tango 2 and Bravo so that's Tango 2 that's Bravo Tango 2 and Bravo that's okay so the other aircraft they receive my information so they know how I am going to proceed in my taxi that is very important when you are flying online in the, any online network like Vatsin, Eval, Pilot Edge you have to coordinate have to carefully do the taxi we are not supposed to exceed 10 knots during the turns 90 degrees turns and we are not supposed to exceed 25 knots in the direct and long taxis and never never exceed 30 knots but I like to has I, ha I like to have as a threshold 25 knots Okay, going to do the taxi in this beautiful scenery from uh, FS Dream Team, I guess. Yeah, four hour day from FS Dream Team. And during the ta during the taxi procedure, we can do the before takeoff check if you want. So maybe it's a good time to do the before takeoff check at least. Before takeoff check. Uh, Flaps 5 green lights, you stabilize the train 5.2 units, engine start switch is continuous before takeoff check complete. If you want to communicate to the cabin crew, you can go here, open the PA, and say, Cabin crew, prepare for takeoff, and go back to radio to speak with the ATC. Wow, my mouth is dry. It's too many information to speak, but you know, again, if you subscribe this channel, if you help me to share the content of this channel, when you reach uh, a thousand subscribers, I am going to open new videos, like specifically systems like bleed air, electric systems, you know, fuel systems, and so on. I'm going to plan to. Um, 
publish a very detailed information about the Boeing 737NG collected in the more than 15 years of experience and let's learn all together I hope my English will be enough to teach you or to share some nice information and if I do some mistakes you can you know just send a comment give me your feedback and I try to be better I try to correct my mistakes language maybe my accent maybe some even my, some technical information you know I don't know everything okay but let's has let's have some fun help me to share this content to get more subscribers and for every thousand subscribers we have I'm going to publish new course new contents okay so by now I'm going to publish this video and uh, this weekend I'm going to put two two videos and this one is recorded live you know I'm planning to have uh, weekly live videos preparing for the takeoff fixed lights is going to on taxi lights off position lights to strobe and steady ensure auto throttle is on transponder TARA and let's coordinate traffic for Lauderdale take off runway 10 left bye bye This ramp in my left is exists in the real life. This is to avoid some jet blast in the car cars just behind the runway. Let's do a rollout uh, takeoff. Accelerate to 40%. Stabilize it and take off thrust. Toga. Let's take off. Eighty knots, hundred, V one, V one, V one, rotate. V two. When you get the rotate, you just pull the yoke to command the takeoff. Positive rate, gear up. A manual flight so far. Command A. Gear off. Auto brakes off. Engine starts off. And goodbye for a lot of day. Or goodbye, Miami. Flaps one, flaps up. After takeoff checklist, engine bleeds on, packs auto, landing gear up and off, flaps up no lights. After takeoff checklist complete, let's go directly to 40,000 feet. Let's put in my MCP 40,000. Click altitude intervention and let's go. Let's put my weather radar. I was supposed to turn this on prior to the takeoff. Now 
nice flex wings, eh? very nice. That's a PMDG 3D flex wings F effect. There is very realistic, in my opinion. We cross uh, 6,000 feet. We are going to directly to 40,000. But um, when crossing 10,000, we have to do a small flow, mainly to check the pressurization, to make sure the pressurization systems is working well. And we can also turn off the landing lights when crossing 10,000 feet. By now we are close to 8,500, as you can see. And we are following the departure procedure. Heading sync. And we cross uh, 10,000 feet, and now we can turn off the fixed landing lights. Seatbelt signs can go to off or auto. Precisation checked. Uh, we check the cabin differential pressure and the cabin temperature, and also the climb rate. And everything is normal now. Everything is fine. And now it's all about to monitoring the climb because we command already to the aircraft to go to 40,000 feet from now.